Hi, this is Mark. In this video, I'm going to talk about the Dunning-Kruger effect. Um, basically, it's showing that confidence is a function of expertise, and there is a um, inverse relationship beyond this point, beyond this limit right here. So we can call this, um, this is the upper limit. So we can call this the upper limit. And then the uh, confidence depreciates until it reaches the, uh, we can just denote this as a relative min, relative minimum. And then it starts in climbing again until it reaches um, another limit that is generally going to be in between the upper limit and the relative minimum. And this is when um, essentially what's what's happening is um, closure, like the, you know the person's gaining some closure or a higher degree of expertise. It's get this this minimum right here is in reference to um, to it's it's a point at which the person realizes that um, they really do not understand or do not know as much as what was initially realized or initially the case. So as you as you transgress in this direction, confidence depreciates to this minimum and then it eventually starts climbing again when once you get over the hump, the resistance, and things start making more sense, there should be a climb. Um, but this is all dependent. This this is a transient function. It's not going to follow. Uh, of course, it's going to be different for everyone, and it it could it could also regress. It's not just going in this direction. It's not just. It could also regress in the opposite direction. And with everything in life is a cyclic process. It's relative to what was previously um, encountered. There's always a alteration of difference um like a, our with anything whether it's degree of understanding confidence it's always transient it's always changing our expertise or our or our perception of what we view or our perception of our understanding is going to be altered or it's going to evolve over time and it's a function of what new information comes into the equation when we gather new information it, it could either cause us to um, transgress or regress, depending on what occurs. So like a pitfall or something, an obstacle could cause regression. Um, but usually it is an obstacle because it, it's something that you realize. Because initially what what we notice in, um, in any given field, so we can have like a field, let's say mathematics. So like math, mathematics. So the field of mathematics started at a, as a point. It, it started as a point. And then over time, so what ended up happening, what we do is we can we can denote this as, a, let's say, radius. Um, or we could call this R1. So let's just say over like, uh, so T, T1, this is time. Let's suppose this is a range of time, a subset of time. So basically time is continuous. In this case, we're just drawing it as an arrow. But let's just uh, take this time range. And this is based on from the beginning to this uh, range. So basically what we, what we do is there's a, a set. Uh, what we do is we, we essentially have a, uh, this is a bound, upper bound. And within here, we have subfields, possible subfields or overlapping fields. And we have information within each field, so forth, however many we define. And the Dunning-Kruger effect is, is a function of this radius. So it's a function. So, so Dunning-Kruger... equals a function of 
radius, which is how expansive this field is from an abstract. From an abstract this is just an abstract representation. It's not like the field has a radius. It's showing in, 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 in a relative scale how large the field is. So think of like a sphere, sphere in three dimensions. Um, we're, we're gathering more and more information and think of a sphere getting larger as information is increasing and, the, and as the field gets larger the sphere gets like the it's a field it's a, like think of a spherical field it's getting larger and larger and then in between these sphere spherical set it's like a set but it's a three-dimensional set that comprises of individual subfields and um, that overlap and, and and basically over time, we gather more and more information. We develop more fields and subfields. So over time, um, eventually, so this, this is like T1, and then let's say we're gonna go, uh, let's say this is uh, T1, and then th let's just say now this is uh, T2. So this is time axis. So we just say T1, and T2 are subsets of time. So this means subset. This is this math, mathematical terminology. Um, but anyways, uh, so time keep, keeps continuing. So if we represent um, the time axis T1 and T2, so let's just say this is... Uh, uh, So let's just now we're going to consider the new radius. So initially we had the point and we had R1 and now we're going to have so we're going to have our radius 2 so we can just say radius 1 is a subset of radius 2 or it's it's basically the length in terms of the length um, or less than in this case, uh, radius one is um, well. This would just be less than, of course. Uh, we're going to consider radius one less than, or we don't have to consider that. Let's just say, uh, well, that, that is true for this representation. Um, so radius. So essentially, what what's happening is now that we open the field, much it's larger. We're going to con now consider the previous field. But it may even collapse. Like now we may add new, it changes. It's always changing. Some fields, subfields uh, may collapse. Some may grow. Uh, we may define it as another field and so forth. So it's always changing. But we de definitely develop more uh, subfields within this range and so forth. Usually there's overlap. I mean, I think in every, every case... Um, degrees and less depending on how new the field is so these are just you just call these these are subfields and then um, this is just a uh, field so now what is noted what the dunning kruger does is when when someone it depends on how localized information gathering is. So generally, like if, if someone focuses their entire life on this field right here. So like, uh, so all our focus, so like all of our focus is projected towards this field. So if we're, we're just like out here, we're, we're, we're kind of like observing and um what ends up happening is if if it's a if it's a convergent focus it kind of creates the illusion of expertise because when what ends up happening is when you uh kind of depart away from other fields and you focus on just an individual field of expertise or subfield the other fields uh obviously clearly become very complex but at the same time, because of that, uh, you either tend to come to the conclusion that um, 
or, or you tend to not come to a conclusion, but avoid those outer, you don't even put much focus on those outer um, subfields or fields. So essentially when information is, uh, it can seem as if the information as gathered is uh, very um, advanced when you gain expertise within a localized space. So each subfield is localized. Um, and it would be like an example, like you learn, uh, you spend your whole life learning um, elementary mathematics um, and exclude, exclude all the other fields. And um, of course, there's going to be some expertise within that localized region. But um, when you don't po put a focus on the potential that exists outside the field, it depreciates uh, what you consider or what you view as, as in, or how, how would I put it, how, how globalized you view reality, basically. So it, this is more, the Dunning-Kruger has to do with how convergent the process is. Well, now when you, so for instance, um, how would I draw this? So we have convergence. So generally what, and everyone does this. So the differentiation between convergence is you basically have, let's say, information. So this is like information that is collected. And what ends up happening is all the, all the information gets directed inward towards this point. And this is a uh, convergence. And whereas divergence is the opposite case, the divergence is the projection outward from a point and so forth. So divergence is like fission and this is like fusion. And this is like, yeah, divergence is like fission. So we all do this to degree. So divergence allows us to encapsulate new fields of understanding. Convergence allows us to actually converge to an understanding. So essentially, for instance, uh, let's say there's a subfield Uh, let's just say this is time. We're focusing on a subfield, and then this is our understanding. So basically, there there's usually a limit. May not exactly follow this function. Limit, and that this limit is defined according to the bound upper bound. So within the subfield, there's a boundary. And that boundary limits our whole understanding, but it's it's what we define as humans. Um, it doesn't mean it can go well beyond that. There is, we never reach absolute uh, certainty or truth. So in all these fields, there's a limit because we have a limit in our perception, our range of perception, and we do not know the boundary the uh, bounds so essentially what ends up happening is our perception so let's say let's say this is one dimension you know we have uh two dimensions we have three dimensions you know and so forth and uh if we right now if we if we consider that the uh, and then nullity so i mean and, and you know we're going to this is direction towards nullity and this is a direction towards absolutes. And essentially, we do not know what right resides up here. It's, it goes towards, uh, tends to infinity. And the more we localize our space, as we like, let's say we localize, or, you know, generally we're, we're within this, you know, localized space right here. This is our, uh, say our range. So, you know, so forth. This is a uh, range of perception. 
And essentially, because it's bounded, our information, our understanding is bounded. So therefore, there exists some limit where we can no longer attain. And it basically, if this is a continuous understanding or, or cumulative, this is a cumulative you know, eventually it could depreciate if we like get all, if you get Alzheimer's and so forth, it goes in the other direction. So usually it goes like this, but it can also regress. Now, how this has to do with the Dunning-Kruger is when there's too much convergence, um, we are become bounded by the artificial world that we live in. Um, I like to think of it like this. So we, we, if we have right now so again we have this radius this is the artificial world so it consists of like technology we have theories definitions um, you know just objectivity uh, truth, facts, you know, we have data, so forth. So, um, this is a bounded system. It's, it's, but essentially there is, there exist infinite, uh, there exist, um, multiple points that are out here. So basically over time, uh, this is a timeline. So essentially, we know we we start with uh, we start with like so essentially, this is like uh, if we're going in this direction and we're representing these nodes. So what we can do is if I bring it over here, we can represent this as a uh, timeline. So we start here, we, then we go here, um, here, and so forth, and then finally maybe here. So this is like t equals zero, t equals t1, t equals t2, t3. And then we continue. It goes on and on and on. But even then, this this these regions right here is exists with uh, this is a creativity. This these are possibilities. So these are possibility unknown. And essentially, you can notice. To get to this direction, we must make a projection beyond the known. So this is the known. And then if, if we, you know, if basically, uh, so this is in order to get to here. Um, so if like we have like three dimensional space. So this is our like, uh, just think of like a known, known world, you know, known world. And this is our, like a position. Uh, this is a, how would I put this? This is a, this is a relative position. And then what we do is if you make a projection into the unknown, what we tr tend to do is uh, transfer. The key is to c go towards the unknown and try to, with creativity, is make a projection, but it's based on the known. It's always based off of the known. And by converging and only living within the, the re bounded region, that can kind of co create the uh, Dunning-Kruger effects, especially when it's a localized, on a localized scale. Another factor, what I found is, um, 
which, how, what, in, which information we focus on it. It depends. It depends on what we focus on, and of course, uh, depends on ego, you know, etc. Our image that we want to create. This is like a image we want to create. So, um, what I mean by that is like, you know, there there is a uh, we have uh, there's a there we have we know this uh, potential energy. You know, we know this converts to kinetic. But we also know like human potential converts to basically uh, we could consider, you know, this to, you know, um, just progression, progressive work. So if you're in a position, so like, uh, again, if you're in a position somewhere and you decide to live within this small region and focus kind of solely on, you know, the bits and exclude. So let's just say, you know, the, these are just, uh, this is inclusive. This is exclusive. So basically, if there exists like uh, bits that you're kind of not really putting much emphasis on, uh, well, you don't realize this, this potential large potential exist beyond the localized region. So there's a lot of individuals who have very high potential and you have to be awareness requires awareness, awareness of like strengths, strengths. And when you just focus on your own bubble uh, in your own little world, it kind of can, can induce this effect. So in actuality, um, what we truly know in this world is like a speck of dust. It's nothing because we, we know that our range is so limited. Range of perception is limited right here. We do not know what goes beyond that upper bound. And therefore, we do not know how many possibilities exist in the unknown. And therefore, you know, in actuality, we know nothing. I know nothing on a relative scale. It's, it's kind of when you realize that there's so many fields and subfields that it just exceeds the comprehension, um, our ability to comprehend, even with like, uh, the topic of God's existence. It's incomprehensible. Um, this bounded little world cannot allow us to gauge whether or not the existence is true or false. The possibility always exists. And, you know, it's, it's, it, and things that we do believe are not always firm, firmly established. There's going to be errors. There's always exist errors. So this Dunning-Kruger effect has to do a lot of times with the, if there's too much convergence and not enough divergence, divergence is always important. Um, it's just going beyond the known because the known is so small. Um, it's only relative onto the time scale. And uh, it, you know, from like with me, like being a math major, I, um, I know individuals who what way who were well surpassed my ability. Um, they proceeded at a much faster rate and 
you know, I realize my, you know, my regression relative to theirs. And it, it, it just, I took it as like an awe, you know, cause someone who has that potential is, is really is the type, type they're the type of people who progress the world forward. They're the people who allow this movement and, uh, you know, like a feeble mind like myself, it's not really going to, uh, you know, on a localized scale, especially it's not, I mean, it's not going to do much. Basically the summation of all the efforts is what induces much higher potential energy. And, uh, and you know, it's just, we're, we're in this universe, we're realizing just the immensity over time. It's, it's, uh, it's, there's always more to learn in every given day. Um, there's always, um, infinite potential out there. It's just, we, you know, we don't, we're not there yet. That's why like people who are way ahead of their time, they make a projection like Tesla made a projection, a future, some you know, well into the future. Maybe some people thought he was crazy, but eventually we caught up to his projection and, uh, he was well beyond his years. You know, and that's it dictates his his him being a genius. Um, and people realize his such potential was high potential was there. The ones who were aware, and um, you know, we definitely realize that into the future now, um, especially after his passing. And uh, that that a lot of times is the case. We realize, like when you're alive and you're a creative individual, there is a competition field. Uh, you have divergent viewpoints. There's usually the yin yang. Uh, there's usually a split between um, a dipole split between what you believe in others. And this happens like with Jordan Pearson. You got one side who hate him or who uh, I wouldn't say he hates a strong word, but they've used the word terminology because there's a lot of disagreement of what is. And essentially, uh, I think anyone who's out there trying to progress, be creative, has the potential to make errors. The errors are always there when you let out your ideas. Even in this video right here, um, there's going to be potential errors and, uh, it's, it's inevitable and, uh, can't believe with every, everything, um, you know, someone, someone mentions, mentions something. It's, 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 it's all, predicated on it's all based on um just what we know in this small localized region i can't understand every single field and so forth if like just like jordan pearson being a psychologist you can't expect him to be in every single or have expertise like if he goes to another field and he you know you're gonna have these individuals with maybe the expertise who tackle it or you know they're, they're like her it kind of becomes like a battleground, but, um, but in the end, you know, this artificial world we live in is, is still minuscule in proportion to, uh, the global scale, which is what goes beyond our comprehension, what goes beyond our con range of uh, perception. So yeah, that's just my take on this, the Dunning-Kruger effect, kind of how it's formulated. Um, there there are arguments of how it relates to intelligence, but that correlation is going to collapse and fall as people realize the Dunning-Kruger effect. You know, there, there's a little bit of, um, now there's going, what's going to be created is, it's, we shouldn't even uh, link it to intelligence. Uh, it's just, to me, it's like, oh yeah, if you, you know, if you think you know, you don't know anything, therefore you're intelligent. That's not, you know, that's not, shouldn't be the case. We shouldn't even get into that type of mo you know, style of thinking. It's just, then it becomes this, this, uh, you can't, you can't really build these even with correlations. Like correlations are not absolutes. And, um, again, it's, 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 uh, it's to me, it's more to do with the di whether you're, um, focusing on the, or like a narrow focus versus a, uh, continuous focus in a divergent direction. You're continuously striving to gain more information or you're just um, going to live in a localized 
world where you you think you're an expert in this like subset of the you know that of the totality of existence um i think it's more in line with with that um and we all have the potential to strive for that all of the potential to be modest or all of the potential to um understand our limitations we all have the potential to um you know just be i would say um skeptical be skeptical that we don't really know or can comprehend fully uh and uh you know i think i think in general we all or we reach these limits at different points um it depends on what happens what transpires uh you know something could happen you may go in the negative direction um that's why the dunning kruger effect is not just a transgressive process you can regress you can always there exist certain points in your life that you could actually go the other direction you may deem yourself an expert under certain circumstances under like think about like when you become delusional like or in a manic type episode or you know that that can kind of instigate some change or uh what is it when you become you think you um uh, there's certain you know disorders out there that can make it you know change the ego or alter the ego or the image self-image and that can change the position along the Don and Kruger spectrum but it's just a uh something that was constructed uh just like any other concept that we have it's just something that we c created in a way to express understanding of this you know world in some way um essentially it's and that's limited to what is already known so eventually it's going to be refined things are always refined things are always moving moving parts we're transgressing into the future and then the possibilities we're latching onto that previously were out of our reach so i think this always is existing and as long as we look out and understand the possibilities are endless uh then we can we can just approach life with deepening understanding deepening uh this not not trying to uh necessarily like just win the race because we can't just live our life based on numbers we can't just live our life based on discrete positions that we want to get and and rank it in terms of where we are relative to others that's just to me a waste of energy uh in in my view and um i think it's okay to do so I, I guess if if it's okay to be competitive it's okay to but i think it's it's when it when it when it becomes destructive that's not you know you don't want to be you know going the destructive direction that, and that's usually created when there's negative emotions like uh jealousy uh greed you know like just anger bitterment resent you know it's good it's okay to appreciate other people like if other people get successful and use that as energy use that as leverage use that as fuel use that as motivation rather than use it now if you can if it makes you jealous and that, that just causes depreciation so that's what's a waste of energy in my view um but there's always the potential out there you just got to appreciate the other people's p success and the potential and then maybe um and, not, and then know the limitations and find the regions of space that you that can re you, we can uh or we need to strive to try to get in the regions where our potential is uh, optimized um i mean i can't consider myself to be a quantum physicist or a um basketball player or something like that i have to live within the bounds of you know my um i guess my you know i consider my identity that um or my base, which is, ba you know, gives me a limitation. There's always improvement. You can always improve, but it, it depends on the rate of change and how, how it feeds the reward system. Uh, that, that creates the fulfillment in life. And we need to satisfy our reward system in some way through interest. And interest are proportional to strengths. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to stop here. I kind of went on a long-winded tan tangent. But I uh, hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.